Welcome to the first bonus installment in the Eight Essential Steps to Claw Hammer Banjo video series. So if you worked your way through all of the videos so far, then you now possess sort of all of the technical uh, elements required to start making some really great sounds uh, from your banjo. So you know how to strike uh, single strings, uh, you know how to strum, uh, you, know how, you know the right way to go about sounding the fifth string. Uh, you know how to do alternate string hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides. So you're now poised and ready to unleash these newly acquired skills in the name of really great music. You see, the last thing I want to happen to you is for you to diligently work through the uh, Eight Essential Steps to Claw Hammer series and then sort of fizzle out and not know where to go. So I want to make sure that you put these hard-won skills uh, that you've developed to good use. And uh, so the additional content that I'm creating here is to try to ensure that you keep the momentum going and that you start making some sounds from your banjo that are rewarding um, so that you'll keep on progressing. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering sort of the basic rhythmic structure that underlines claw hammer banjo. And I'm going to be showing you sort of how we uh, combine the different uh, technical elements that we've learned uh, to create different sounds and rhythms. And I think it'll be uh, sort of an eye-opening lesson for you. And then after we do that, uh, we'll be learning our first uh, full tune from start to finish, which is uh, Long Journey Home. Now, as you probably know, uh, one of the defining things about Clawhammer Banjo is this driving rhythm that's created. It's probably the thing that made you say, geez, I really want to learn that in the first place. Um, it's what usually kind of grabs people's attention and, and gets people's you know, feet moving and has them begging for more. And so uh, in order for us to kind of dig a little bit deeper uh, into, into the rhythmic structure of claw hammer, um, I'm going to cover a little bit of music theory. And don't worry, uh, we're not going to be covering any theory for theory's sake, uh, only if it uh, deepens our understanding uh, of what we're doing. I promise that I'll only cover music theory that helps you play better and none that makes you play worse. So in general, every piece of music can be divided into a fundamental uh, repeating rhythmic unit. And we refer to that as a measure of music. In Clawhammer banjo, much of the time, you're gonna be playing in what's known as two, four time signature. And for the purposes of this discussion, uh, the only thing you really need to know is that the, that the music is kind of divided into two beat chunks. Um, so each measure has two beats. And if we count out those beats, we typically do it like one, two, one, two. And when we talk about tempo, uh, we're usually uh, measuring that in terms of beats per minute. And that's what we mean. We mean how many times we're counting those beats in a given minute. Um, this is the same as the clicks of the metronome. So, for example, I have the metronome here set to around 60 beats per minute. And if we count uh, just those uh, one, two beats uh, for each measure, it sounds like this. One, two, one, two, one, two. And if we play each of those beats on the banjo, uh, here I'm going to play the first string. It sounds like this. One, two, one, two, one, two. And we refer to those one and two beats as the downbeat. Now what we can do is we can divide each of those downbeats into two. So now our measure has four different counts. And the way we count that out is one and two and one and two and. So once again on the metronome, that would sound like this. One and two and one and two and. 
And on the banjo, like this. One and two and one and two and. So what we've done here is basically inserted the word and in between those one and two counts. And that and beat will refer to as the upbeat. And almost always those down and up beats are going to be played by your picking finger or your frailing finger as opposed to the thumb. Now, we can go one step further and we can divide all that into half one more time. And if this is all starting to look a little bit like math, it's because it is. You may have heard the expression that music is math made beautiful. So if you like music, I've got news for you. You like math. Um, but at any rate, the, um, the way we count uh, these eight divisions, if we're going to count them all out, is like this. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a... So with the metronome, it sounds like this. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a two E. And we are going to refer to those beats, those E's and A's that we've put in there, as the offbeat. And the offbeat is the domain of the thumb. So when you're using your thumb in claw hammer, you're almost always using it to play a note that falls on the offbeat. Okay? So if we play that on our banjo, it sounds like this. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. So you'll notice I was striking the fifth string on each of those E's and A's. So this is really the fundamental structure that underlies much of claw hammer banjo music. And um, how we choose to fill in that structure on the banjo is really up to us. But it's important to remember that those beats are always there, regardless of whether we choose to sound them out or make a note on our banjo during them. Um, we can fill them with a note or we can leave them silent. And how we do so uh, really has a big impact on how the music ends up sounding. What I'm going to now cover are kind of the two most common ways of filling in that structure to create the two rhythms that you'll hear a lot in Clawhammer banjo. So in this first example, we're going to sound that first downbeat uh, by striking a single string uh, with our picking finger. And then for the first offbeat, our thumb has come to rest up against the fifth string and we're going to choose to leave it silent. Okay, next, uh, on that first downbeat, we're going to strum across the strings. Once again, our thumb has come to rest against the fifth, and this time we are going to sound the fifth string. Now, for the second half of our measure, we're going to do the exact same thing. So, strike down, thumb rest, strum, pluck. What we've created here is what's known as the bum diddy rhythm, okay? Bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy. And you can see it's created by just leaving those first and third off beats silent. And if we're counting that out, we would count it as one and a two and a, we've left that E part out, which was our first and third off beat. If we play that along with the metronome, it sounds like this. <clears throat> For our second example, uh, what we're going to do is again start with that first downbeat by striking a single string. And then when our thumb comes to rest against the fifth this time, we're going to sound that note. And then we're going to, once again, on the uh, upbeat, we're going to strike a single string. And once again, we're going to sound that fifth string with our thumb. And then we're going to repeat that same pattern for the second half of the, half of the measure. So what we end up with is this. In other words, we've filled every available uh, slot in our eight unit measure with a note. And this is uh, what is usually referred to as a bump a ditty rhythm. So uh, just like one E and a two E and a bump a ditty, bump a ditty, just to represent that we're filling all those spaces with a note. And if we play that along with the metronome, it sounds like this.
So those are the two core rhythms that you'll hear a lot in Clawhammer banjo, both the bum ditty and the bumba ditty. And uh, some players will sort of rely on one almost exclusively in their playing. Someone like Grandpa Jones, for example, uh, relied heavily on the bum ditty rhythm in his playing. And that's a really good one if you're accompanying yourself singing, uh, which he did. Um, players in the round peak tradition, like Tommy Gerald and Fred Cockerham, um, use the bump a ditty rhythm a lot throughout their music. I personally um, like to use both, uh, depending sort of on the tune and how I'm feeling. Um, I might use one heavily in one piece of music and one in another and mix and match in some. So um, I think it's a good thing to just have options so that you have uh, the ability to choose uh, the sounds that you like and to help to make things more interesting when you play. And you'll notice that the main difference between those two rhythms is just whether or not you decided to pluck that, that uh, fifth string with your thumb on those first and third offbeats. Um, the technique for, for, for playing stays exactly the same. So you're doing the same exact stuff with your hand, but it's only, only these subtle differences that make a big difference in the way things sound and the rhythm that's created. And since you've developed the basic techniques that support playing both of those rhythms, uh, you'll ultimately be able to mix and match uh, however you see fit. Okay, so you ready to see how this all gets put together? So in the second part in this video, we're going to learn our first tune from start to finish, which is the song Long Journey Home. <laughs> 